In today's building market, metal roofing accounts for only about 5% of all roofing materials. But it's also one of the fastest growing segments in the industry. Some experts estimate a growth rate of as much as 20% a year. And in anticipation of that growth, Velux has developed prefabricated flashing systems ensuring weather tight and worry free Velux skylights, even on metal roofs. During the next few minutes, we'll examine how to choose and install the right flashing systems for different metal roofing panels. Their profile determines which Velux flashing system to use. We've divided the metal roofing profiles into three general categories exposed fasteners, concealed fasteners, and continuous corrugated panels. Exposed fastener metal roofing is the most common and features a pronounced flat area between the seams. Velux type EDM metal roof flashing is the preferred system for this type of panel with profiles measuring one and a half inches and less. Concealed fastener metal roofing features any one of a variety of hidden fasteners just as the name implies. It too has a flat area between the seams, so Velux type EDM works best with this kind of panel as well. Again, its overall profile should be one and a half inches or less. Continuous corrugated metal roofing panels feature a continuous rolling profile with no flat area between the seams. The flashing system of choice for these profiles is Velux type EDW high profile flashing. These are the three basic kinds of metal roofing profiles and the Velux flashing systems designed for them. We're going to look closely at each of the flashing types and see how they're installed. We'll start with type EDM flashing for exposed fastener metal roofs. First, let's look at the components of an EDM flashing kit. There's a sill piece with its sill apron, two side gutters, two optional side extension pieces, and a head flashing piece. These hardware packs include screws, flashing nails, and these clips for securing the flashing to the roof deck. Regardless of what kind of roofing material is used, all Velux skylights should be installed on a minimum roof pitch of 312 or more. We begin by preparing the skylight for installation. The details for installation are in these installation instructions packaged with every Velux skylight. It is necessary to have a roof deck around the skylight area. This may seem obvious except that some metal roofing systems can be installed on rafters and battens without an actual roof deck. But a roof deck is required for a skylight to be mounted. Remove the aluminum cladding from the sides and bottom of the skylight, but be sure to leave the top frame cover in place. Wrap the frame in a rubberized roofing underlayment like Velux type ZOZ-121. The underlayment acts as a vapor barrier and creates a more energy efficient installation. In most metal roofing applications, the roofer will cover the deck and wrap the skylight in roofing felt paper. In most applications, it's probably not necessary to use both the roofing underlayment and felt paper. But for some extreme climates where ice and snow prevail, it's a good practice to use both.
Metal roofing panels are ordered in custom lengths to span from the ridge to the eaves in a single seamless panel. Wherever that span is interrupted by a chimney, vent, or skylight, those panels should be ordered with a little extra length to allow for the necessary overlapping seams. A good rule of thumb is this. For every skylight, there should be two roofing panels that are 24 inches longer than the others. The same principle also applies in existing roof applications. Install as many whole uncut panels as possible, leaving these minimum distances between the skylight and the edge of the roofing panels. Along the sides, leave at least three-eighths of an inch between the edge of the panel and the edge of the side flashing material. Exactly where the side flashing edge falls may vary depending on whether the side flashing extension pieces are used. At the bottom, leave two and a half to three inches between the bottom frame and the lower roof panel, and leave a space two and a half to four inches between the top frame and the upper roof panel. Before actually installing any of the flashing, chamfer the top edges of the roof panels along the bottom of the skylight. If we don't chamfer the edges, they could cause damage to the sill apron and ultimately create a leak. So smooth them off to make a nice, even transition. And be sure to go a few inches wider on both sides since the sill flashing is wider than the skylight. Put a piece of roofing underlayment across the chamfered edges. This further ensures that no sharp edges will cut through the sill apron. Pull the rubber gasket to the outside of the sill flashing piece. Be sure the sill flashing seats all the way down to the roof deck so the whole flashing kit will fit tightly together and make a more energy efficient, weather tight seal. Nail through the flashing piece as high up from the roof deck as possible. Use the provided Velux flashing nails. They're compatible with the aluminum flashing and won't promote corrosion. They're also short enough to prevent nailing into the glass. Now form the sill apron to the profile of the roof panel. Engage the left side flashing piece to the headpiece and be sure they securely interlock like this. Engage the right side to the headpiece the same way. Interlock the sides into the grooves on the sill piece and snap the head section over the top frame cladding. Be sure everything has a nice tight fit and nail the side gutter to the side frame of the skylight. Don't nail directly to the roof deck. Use the provided clips to secure the side and nail the clips to the deck. Put a felt paper strip along the top of the head flashing piece to divert any moisture or condensation. Now, be sure that the strip is narrower than the two grooves on the sides. Now we have a complete gutter around the skylight to shed water. Replace the cladding starting at the bottom of the skylight. Slide the side cladding pieces under the head flashing section. Interlock the sides with the bottom piece. Use the supplied screws to secure the head flashing piece to the side frame. If the raised profile happens to fall too closely to the skylight, it'll prevent the flat area from fitting into that side groove. So use the side extension pieces and extend the groove past the raised profile, allowing the flat area to fit into the groove. 
this case, we're using the side extension pieces on both sides. But when we cut the roofing panels for the sides, be sure they're long enough to extend past the bottom frame at least 13 inches. They'll overlap past the sill apron about two inches and prevent water from blowing back up under them. They should also be long enough to engage the head flashing piece and extend under the roofing panels above. So cut them to extend nine inches past the head frame of the skylight. When cutting the panels for the top, remember to allow two and a half to four inches clearance between the head frame and the top roofing panel. The two horizontal seams at the top of the skylight can sometimes be eliminated by cutting the top and side panels as one panel. Just slice the corner here about an inch or so, just far enough to get the edge of the side panel engaged into the side gutter piece. Some installers may be skeptical about the water tightness of this technique. But remember that the flashing extends well beyond this point underneath, so it's still protected against water infiltration. Use a closure strip to close the gap under the roofing panels at the top. Then fasten the last roofing panel to the roof deck. Again, be sure not to put any fasteners through the flashing. And that's it. But notice here that a vertical seam in the roofing material falls within the width of the skylight frame. Velux type EDM used on exposed fastener metal roofs can be installed in one of two different methods. The first method is used when a seam falls within the width of the skylight, like this one. The second method is used when no seam occurs within the width of the skylight. Since there's no vertical seam, the skylight falls within the width of one whole roofing panel, so there will always be a horizontal seam in the roofing panel above the skylight. Here's how to install type EDM flashing using the second method, where the skylight falls between the seams. Install the flashing kit around the skylight and form the sill apron into shape with the roof panel profile, just like we did for method one. If a seam in the roofing panels falls between the outer edge of the side gutter and the outer edge of the sill apron, the apron can be trimmed at the seam. Be sure to form an upstand at the edge to divert water downward. Now engage the side roofing panel into the side gutters and layer it right over that seam. And at the top, the upper roofing panel will overlap the side panels several inches. That's why we need those extra long roofing panels. And once the top panels are installed and fastened to the roof deck, that will do it for method two, where there's no vertical seam within the width of the skylight frame. So now we've seen both ways for installing Velux type EDM flashing on metal roofs with exposed fasteners. Next, we'll consider those metal roofing panels with concealed fasteners. Type EDM flashing is designed for these panels, too. Some concealed fastener roofing panels have a little higher profile than others. If the profile is higher than an inch and a half, the sill apron won't form to the panel very well, and the roofer will have to make his own flashing with the metal roofing panels. But as long as the profile is an inch and a half or less, the type EDM sill apron can be molded to the panel quite nicely. Type EDM flashing works with concealed fastener panels almost the same way it works with exposed fastener panels. The only difference is in the way we chamfer the edges of the lower panels at the bottom of the skylight. Only the snap-on batten should be chamfered, not the panel itself. Mark a 45 degree angle at the end of the batten and using a hand seamer, fold the batten along that angle like this. The 
batten snaps over the seam like normal, but chamfering the end prevents any sharp edges from cutting the sill apron. So, Velux type EDM metal roof flashing can be used with roofing panels that have exposed fasteners or concealed fasteners. It cannot be used with continuous corrugated metal roofing panels. Since corrugated metal panels don't have a pronounced flat area to engage into the side flashing groove, they require a different type flashing. Velux type EDW high profile flashing. Let's take a look at the components of a type EDW flashing kit. There's a sill apron similar to the one used with type EDM. Two side gutters and a head flashing piece. The hardware packs include screws, flashing nails, and mounting clips. These rain diverter channels are needed for tile roofing, but aren't used when installing EDW on a metal roof. We begin the same way as with type EDM, installing as many whole, uncut roofing panels as possible. Notice the vertical seam in the roofing material that falls within the width of the skylight frame. With the corrugated panels, the seam doesn't affect the type EDW flashing, so we don't need to worry about it. Be sure to observe these minimum spacings between the roofing panels and the skylight frame. At the bottom, leave two and a half to three inches between the bottom frame and the lower roof panel. Leave a space two and a half to four inches between the top frame and the upper roof panel. Along the sides, leave at least six inches between the edge of the roof panel and the side frame of the skylight. Again, before we install the sill flashing, chamfer the edges of the roof panels along the bottom of the skylight they could cut through the sill apron and cause a leak. So be sure to chamfer them off. Again, push the sill flashing piece down around the bottom frame. Don't let it ride up. Be sure the rubber gasket is on the outside of the sill flashing piece and nail the sill piece to the frame. Now engage the right side flashing piece to the sill piece. Be sure they interlock securely. Engage the left side to the sill piece the same way and work the head piece into the two side gutters. Then snap it over the top frame cladding. Be sure everything has a nice tight fit. Press the sides down so they don't ride up and nail them to the side frame of the skylight. Use the clips to secure the sides and sill pieces to the deck. Put a strip of roofing felt paper along the top of the head flashing. Just like with type EDM, we have a complete gutter around the skylight to shed water. Replace the cladding parts and use these screws to secure the head flashing piece to the side frame. Now form the sill apron to the profile of the roof panel. 
be sure to create an upstand or a channel on the side. Trim the foam gasket down to the profile of the panel and be sure it will make good contact along the entire length. There's no need to use a closure strip to close the gap since the EDW head flashing has its own strip built in. Just trim it down to fit the profile of the panel. When cutting the roofing panels for the sides, be sure they're long enough to extend past the sill apron a few inches. Now just fasten the last panels down. Again, be sure not to put any fasteners through the flashing or they may create a leak. And that completes the installation of type EDW flashing on continuous corrugated metal panels. We've looked at installations on metal roofing panels using some of the most popular metal roofing materials, including exposed fasteners, concealed fasteners, and continuous corrugated panels. While there are many different kinds of metal roofing panels, these examples represent the installation techniques for most of the current styles available. And as the metal roofing market continues to evolve, Velux will continue to develop solutions for new applications. Velux, the world leader in roof windows and skylights.